by making that simpler, it's enabled me to be more significant as well. So often in being simpler, you enable yourself to place your focus where it's going to have even more impact for people. It's going to have more of that significance and that is just a wonderful thing. Hello and welcome to the Driven Female Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Melita Campbell, award-winning business coach, value whisperer and founder of the Dream Clients Blueprint. To kick back after the festive break, I've been bringing you a series of mini episodes that I've called the Planisodes. Over the last five episodes, I've brought you a tip and a task to complete each day to help set your business up for success in 2023, so you can really make this your best year yet. This is all about goal setting, planning, and creating the CEO mindset you need to make this year different for all the right reasons. So far, we've looked at what you really want to create this year, how you can build on the lessons of the past, you've created your priority goals and plans, and you know how to manage any fears and doubts as they arise and keep yourself inspired every day. In theory, you're all set. But in practice, I know, and I know you know, we start to dig into our goals and suddenly we feel overwhelmed. Then anything can happen, but not much positive action happens. Often we end up procrastinating, feeling guilty and disappointed with ourselves. We can start to experience some negative emotions which slow us down and keep us thinking small. So today and over the next couple of planisodes, I want to dig into how we can actually make our goals happen smoothly and how we can prevent wobble moments Uh, Well, let's face it, sometimes all out freak out moments when it comes to putting your goals into action. So today I want to share a few strategies that have helped me massively and that I've seen help my clients too when it comes to managing overwhelm. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't already downloaded your planning worksheet that accompanies this series, then go and grab that now at melitacampbell.com slash planisodes 2023. So overwhelm. It can really stand in our way and keep us feeling stuck if we let it. So I'm really looking forward to digging in today and sharing some of my favorite strategies with you. So the first strategy to overcoming overwhelm is to simply breathe. When we feel overwhelmed, our body can start to go into panic mode, into this fight or flight mode, and it shuts down. It doesn't think logically. Nothing quite happens and everything gets blown out of proportion a little bit. By simply breathing, we can calm down our nervous system so we start to feel more calm, more centered, and more in the moment. And that's what it really takes. Overwhelm is often us thinking about the future, what ifs, and all the things that are coming next. We don't get overwhelmed in the moment doing one activity. And it's the same with fear and doubt. You don't typically feel these when you're in the moment, when you're actually in action. So breathe so you can get back into action and think, well, what's that next one thing I can do that's going to take me in the direction of my goals? And you can go back to your planning sheet to help you do this. So breathe. And already that might be enough to help you overcome the overwhelm. The second thing that can help you massively in overcoming and managing overwhelm is to have a coach. Now, I know I'm biased on this point because I am a business coach. I help women build their dream business and lifestyle. Helping them overcome overwhelm is a big part of what I do. I see it time and time again. Everything makes logical sense. Yes, this is going to take me in the right direction. This is what I want to do. And they go to do it and they freak out. (laughs) So I come back to a lot of what's on this list. I've seen this working in in practice, but I would say at least 90% of the guests I've interviewed on this show, on the Driven Female Entrepreneur podcast, have attributed their success to having a coach. It helped them to manage overwhelm, to stay focused, to think bigger to realize that their dreams are possible and how to achieve those and often to identify ways of achieving their big goal that we're not on their radar. It's helped them become a better person, to 
build that self-belief, that CEO mindset. So getting a coach can be really so helpful. And I have produced a guide on what questions to ask to help you find the right business coach. Feel free to drop me a note if you want a copy of that. So breathe, get a coach. The third one is to build habits around your core activities. I liken this to thinking like a trucker. So if you think about a trucker, they get in their cab each day, they know where they're going to go, they have their route and they just drive. (laughs) They don't have to think about, oh, where shall I go today? What shall I do? They know exactly what to do to get from A to B and how to make that work. They know how to drive that truck. So by building habits around the core activities that you do every day. So if you are creating content for social media every day and engaging with your audience, maybe that's a habit you build that goes alongside your morning coffee. So it anchors it into your day and makes it something that you just do like clockwork. You don't overthink, you just do it. You get in your truck and you drive. So Think about what are the core activities you need to do every single day and make that a habit, make that part of the way you do things, the way you conduct your day each day. That is going to take away a lot of the thinking. You know, you just sit down and this is what you do. It becomes a habit. It becomes easier and easier over time. So that is going to take away some of the overwhelm because that's a big chunk of your day. You're getting your priorities done. The needle movers in your business that need to get done every day are done. After that, you don't need to worry so much about what happens in your business. So building habits around your core activities can really, really help. Hi, I wanted to pop in here with a quick message for those of you who are serious about moving your business forward this year and having a greater impact for more clients. I've got your back. I'm here to guide and support you every step of the way through my business and mindset coaching. And right now, the doors are open to my membership, the Dream Clients Academy, and there's even special pricing making it a no-brainer to get personal support for your business each week for less than your monthly Starbucks bill. Check it out at melitacampbell.com slash academy. The next one is a little phrase that I started challenging myself with a few years ago and now many of my clients have adopted it as well and it's this, how could this be simpler? So often I sit down to do something and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I like things to be done well and I really want to create the most incredible experience for my clients and audience so I tend to overthink I am the queen of overthinking. This is where my coach and my mastermind group are phenomenal at helping me say, hold on a minute, why are you doing all of this? Why don't you just do that? And I've trained myself. If things feel overwhelming, if it feels like too much to do, more than I could possibly handle, I take a break, I go for a walk, I breathe and I'll challenge myself. And often when I take a break, my mind will work in the background on this and ask, how could this be simpler? And so often I've been thinking of something huge and then I'll think, huh, I just need to do this. And then it's easy. Then I know exactly what to do. It's simpler. I break it down. Well, what's the first step? And once I take that first step, the next one follows and it gets done. And it's crazy how much of a difference that has made. So one thing that I did in the Dream Clients Academy was every month I show up and I do a marketing mastermind and I was creating presentation slides and all sorts of things in there. And it was taking me such a long time to put everything together. It was overwhelming for me. And then I figured if this is overwhelming for me, what's it going to be like for them? So what I decided to do was have a framework of what I wanted to cover in the session, what I felt people needed to know and what tools and insights and wisdom I wanted to share with them. But then I deliver it without presentation slides. And this has done something really amazing because one, it makes it much, much simpler for me. I can stay actually more focused on the content and the principles and not where to look or where to click. So it saved me a lot of time and it also is helping me be more present for that audience. And because I don't have the slides between me and them, 
it's broken down a bit of a barrier. So these masterclasses have become really interactive. It's become more of a workshop than a masterclass. And I love every single one of them. People ask questions, they start to apply things as we go through. They are really vibrant sessions, much more than if it was just a presentation that I was given. So in that instance, by keeping it simpler for me, it's actually gone into my other mission, which is to make sure that all my content is simple and significant. That it's simple, it's doable, it feels achievable, but it has impact. And that's what I aim to do with all of my content. And in fact, by moving away from giving the presentations, by making that simpler, it's enabled me to be more significant as well. So often in being simpler, you enable yourself to place your focus where it's going to have even more impact for people. It's going to have more of that significance. And that is just a wonderful thing. So challenge yourself. How could this be simpler? And that leads nicely into my next suggestion, which is to think progress and practice over perfection. So many of us have this tendency to try and be perfect in everything we do. And of course, we want to be great. We want to be significant. We want to have that impact. But by being perfect, we actually hold ourselves back from that. A little bit like my example with the Academy Masterclasses. When I stopped aiming to be perfect, I was able to have more impact. So we want to always be making progress and learning. You'll learn so much more from jumping in, getting started, making mistakes and figuring things out than you will from waiting for everything to be perfect. Perfect doesn't even exist. It's very subjective. So it's also going to hold you back massively. So you want to overcome perfectionism and start focusing on making progress and practicing things. Instead of going for that big product launch, do a light launch, see what works, see what was enjoyable, then reuse the bits that work and add into that. Grow each time. And there's a nice little method that I learned a while ago from a mindset coach I was working with, and I've dubbed it the Olympic method. So what you need to do is list out all your actions for the day and then rate them, which needs to be done to a gold standard, which to a silver standard, and which to a bronze standard. Now the bronze standard tasks, they just need to get done. They don't need to be perfect, far from it. They just need to be done. Your silver level tasks, need to be good. And then your gold level tasks need to be amazing. So let me give you an example of this. So say you were going to give a TED talk. That's a gold level task. You want to put as much time and effort into making that as good as it can possibly be as you can. It never will be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close to perfect. Your silver level task may be a presentation or a talk you're giving at a local association. So this needs to be good. It's your reputation on the line, but it doesn't need to be perfect. If you fluff your lines, that's okay. Good is good enough in this case. And then maybe a bronze level task, it just needs to get done, is a quick live video to update your audience on something on social media. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be done. It's gonna have more impact if it's there, if it's real and you'll plan it out a little bit. Perhaps you have a couple of bullet points to guide you, but it doesn't need to be perfect. So there's an example of a gold, silver, and bronze level tasks for the same kind of uh, project. If you tackled every live video as a gold level task, then you're not gonna have much time for anything else. You may not even get time to do all the live videos that you wanted, for example. I'm not saying that you have to do live videos every day, but I'm just using this as an example. So you want to go through your tasks and you're going to notice that hardly any of those tasks are gold level tasks. You may have one or two gold level tasks in a year. This method can help you give tasks the appropriate amount of time, resources and energy. So try that out on the to-do list you've got for today. Apply the gold, silver, bronze concept to those tasks and see how that changes things. Maybe you realize that, oh, I've been treating everything as a gold standard task. That's not uncommon. But when you consciously think about it, you realize actually most of these are bronze level tasks. So try that out. 
come and let me know what you think of it, how you find that method. It's something that my clients really love and I use it a lot. So another thing to do is to practice some time management techniques. So the Olympic method is already one. But one thing that I like to do is the Pomodoro technique. This is brilliant for new tasks that you're not quite sure how long they're going to take. And we've mentioned already that whatever amount of time you plan for a task, particularly if it's a new task, it always takes twice as long or three times as long if it's got anything to do with technology, unless you love technology, (laughs) which most people that I speak to don't seem to. With the Pomodoro technique, you set your timer for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. But what this does, it helps you to focus. It helps you to see how much you can get done in 25 minutes. It teaches you how much time realistically you need for all of the projects and tasks that you have to do on a regular basis or that come up that are new for you. So you're always learning and getting better at scheduling the right amount of time for the tasks that you have to complete. And that's great because that just helps us feel more accomplished. If we actually get done in a day, the things that we say we're going to get done and we know, okay, I need to do X, Y, and Z. And I know that that altogether is going to take me three or four hours. Then I can manage my time appropriately. Another great time management technique is to have a time budget where you block out the time you need for certain activities during the day And you try and stick to that as closely as you can. And what that's going to tell you, again, is what's realistic for you? Where does your energy lie? Maybe you thought, oh, I'm going to schedule all my client calls in the afternoon. But then you realize you don't have the energy. They're better in the morning. Or maybe you realize that you need more time for something else. You start to adjust that. And over time, you can create a time budget that works for you. The final suggestion I have, and I've alluded to this a little bit earlier, is to take a break. Now, this can feel a bit counterintuitive. If you're overwhelmed, you've got so much to do, taking a break can feel like the last thing (laughs) that you should be doing, but it helps you get perspective. It reminds you that the sky won't fall down if you take a little bit more time to do things. It gives you an opportunity to invest in your self-care to remind yourself that you are worthy, you can take time, you can stick to the boundaries and priorities that you set for yourself. And taking a break, much like the breathing, it helps you to relax. And often when I take a break, that's when I start to see when things can be simpler or I can see my start point. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes overcoming overwhelm is as simple as just taking that one next small step a little tiptoe towards the end goal. And that can be enough to get you back into action. But taking a break first will help you find that next step, help you keep things simple, help you relax your body and recenter. There are very few things in life that are so important that we can't take a little bit more time or a little bit of time out. So take the courage and take a break. And after taking a break, you often find you have more energy more focus, more clarity, and all of these things are going to help you move forward with more intention, joy, and success as well. Which of these has resonated with you? What are you going to try first? Is there anything else that you do to manage overwhelm when it comes up for you? Come and share your thoughts and experiences in the Driven Female Entrepreneur Facebook group, or drop me an email and let me know. And if you haven't already followed all of the planisodes, go to melitacampbell.com slash planisodes 2023, where you can access all the episodes together, as well as additional resources to support you. If you're enjoying the show, leave a review and share this podcast with your network and business besties. Let's help everyone have the best year they can this year. And your support really helps the show and means so much to me. I've been your host, Melita Campbell, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.